Okay, got my water and I got my Swiss champ. Uh, my friend over at Outside the Target Demographic was giving me a, a friendly hard time on the last video about doing something on another pouch or another bag and, and still not having done a review or my thoughts on the Swiss champ. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over what I think about the Swiss champ. We're going to talk about what stuff is in here. I still, I will still argue that this is a small knife because it fits in the palm of my hand pretty well. And most multi-tools are much larger than this. So what we'll also talk about besides the tools, we'll talk about which ones I use, which ones I don't. And then I'll kind of give you an idea of what I think of this as an EDC knife. Actually, let me take that back. Not an EDC knife. I want to talk about this as an EDC tool. To me, this is an EDC knife. It's a knife. That's what it does. This is a tool that has a knife in it. So I think that's different. And why it's different is, I know some people like Van Nystat like to carry this in their pocket. I do not carry this in my pocket. It's too heavy. Um, I just don't like the way it feels in my pocket. It's a personal preference. I don't wear jeans all the time. If I wore jeans or jean tight pants, maybe but i wear a lot of shorts i wear a lot of joggers sweatpants stuff like that and this just yeah i mean those pockets are loose so this is just not, not a fan of that i bought a beautiful leather sheath for this off of etsy handmade and for a while when i was wearing jeans i would put on the sheath and i put this in and then after a while i just kind of gave up on that and realized that I liked having this knife on me and I like having this knife in a pouch or it's available to me when I need the tool set but it's not something that I need on me all the time so what the big difference there is we're gonna we'll get into the tools in a second but what the big difference there what I'm saying is when I'm around the house I don't carry my EDC pouch we just did the one on the MDOM um, I call it a digital pouch, but it's got the gadget pouch. That doesn't go around the house with me. That's hanging where my house keys are hanging. And my house keys aren't something that are on me when I'm walking around the house. So this isn't something that goes around the house with me. The Spydeco that I just showed you, that's that clips onto my pants. That's always on me. And my, uh, my TPT slide. I had to lean forward. It's it's attached to my neck right now. But uh, that's always on me because it's attached to my neck. So those two things are on me at all times. But this is just... I don't want this in my pocket when I'm lounging around the house. Or doing stuff around the house. So this is a going out type EDC item. So that's the lens with which I'm going to look at this, basically. So let's start with the exterior. Let's start with the color. I chose black. I could have gone with the classic red, but I think the black is just it's damn sexy looking. It's like a tuxedo for your Victorinox. And uh, I just think, you know, it's very, it's very uh, spy James Bondy, but also just it's very classic. I like the fact that Swiss Army's only come in really two colors. I made this paracord. I matched the black because I like the black. <laughs> Pretty simple. I like the way a Swiss Army works with a paracord. This just little lanyard on there, it makes it real easy to grab it out of things. You know, when I used to have it in that pouch, it would be stowed in like this, and that would be sitting on top, and I could just pluck it out. And when I had it in that sheath, that leather sheath I was telling you about, I could unsnap the sheath, pull this and pull it right out it just it adds something to the knife so I'm a big fan of the lanyard on this I'm, I'm gonna oscillate back and forth between calling this a knife and a tool but we're really looking at it through the lens of a tool so forgive me if I keep saying knife because we call it a Swiss Army knife it's in the damn name <laughs> so on the scales we have the tweezer which I think is probably in my opinion, the most underrated Swiss Army tool because I use the hell out of these things. 
and they are so simple. I mean, it's really just a bent piece of metal. There's no design to it really. You know, it's just bent the right way and it works perfectly for everything I need it for. I don't need anything more complex than this. I like the fact that you're stowing it away and it's essentially just collapsing and disappearing. So a big fan of the tweezers. The toothpick, I never use. I would never put this in my mouth and clean my teeth with it. Number one, it's not sharp enough to get between my teeth. But then I don't like the idea of like, you know, whatever germs or stuff that are in your mouth that you have to brush your teeth every day, that's gonna be on this and then you're just gonna put it in there <laughs> and expect that that stuff is not gonna propagate while it's inside this dark little hole and then you take it out and put it in your mouth again? Yeah, no, uh-uh. I've seen, there's a guy on YouTube, I can't remember his name, he does pretty much all of his content is on Swiss Army Knives and mostly he's showing you really unconventional ways to use the tool sets and he's has some pretty cool stuff on using the toothpick nothing i would necessarily use but it's just really neat to see the way somebody can use that this is something that i think most people would underrate but i find this really useful in an urban setting which is the pressurized ink they call it a pen but it's really just a refill pressurized in the sense that you can write sideways and upside down. I don't think this is waterproof ink. I'm not positive. I've never tested it. So it's similar to the F Fisher Space Pen, but I don't think it's the same thing. This is useful just in situations where you need a ballpoint pen. You know, like signing a receipt, they forget to give you a pen. Do you really want to wait for the waitress to come back to get you a pen? And then you got to wait for her to bring the pen back and then you got to wait you know, you just triple the time it takes to pay the bill. So you could just bust this out. In a camping situation or a survival situation, you might need to make notes on something. You can always find a freaking leaf <laughs> to write on or your skin, or maybe you have a little notebook of paper somewhere. You're probably not walking around camping or doing bushcrafting with a pen on you. So this is a nice little convenient way to have a pen without having to like make space for the pen. So I appreciate that. I don't use it. I don't camp a lot, but if I did, it'd be nice to have it just in case, you know, maybe you get lost or something and you need to leave a note pinned to a tree. Like I was here. The other thing I love about this knife is actually the corkscrew. Everybody's surprised I said that. Let's get a little water. I don't love it because of the corkscrew. I mean, the corkscrew is one of those things that maybe once ever I'm going to be in a situation where I'm like, damn, I need a corkscrew and I'll have it. But the reason I love the corkscrew on here is because Victorinox thought about the fact that people aren't necessarily going to be heavily using the corkscrew on a Swiss Army knife. So they utilize the space that the corkscrew takes up for a couple other uses. One is this gray little thing, which is the little mini screwdriver. You know, this is the size for adjusting glasses or something like that. But I love how it just, it spindles up right into there and it's in there, you know, that's not loose. That's in there really well. Great use for that. I don't I don't even want to think about how you would make that little screwdriver work in one of the blades. It would just be an ugly looking tool. And, and to be honest, I think we can all agree that Victorinox has some strange, <laughs> ugly looking tools. Actually, let's be fair. All multi-tools do. There's some really ugly looking blades, uh, blade tools in Leatherman too, that you look at and you're like, what would I ever use that for? So this is a great way to give you that little screwdriver and put it in a form factor that is actually useful. You know, you got the little mini, little mini handle on there and everything. The other thing, the hidden one that I love is this pin. Don't need it very often, but sometimes you just need a damn pin. And the fact that it's just hidden there, they didn't have to add that. That's just a beautiful little touch. I'm getting annoyed right now with how dirty this little that's one thing I don't like about the corkscrew spot is it collects all dust, all dust right there. 
Okay, let's 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 do the bottom side first. Uh, it's my least favorite side. <laughs> I don't use the tools down here very much. Number one, because they're hard to get out. Number two, they're all center posted, which for some of them makes sense, um, but it's just not something that I do very often. And a lot of the tools down here are for things that I don't need very often. So for me, this underside is like a bonus. Like, oh, there's those things. Oh, I forgot, those are also there. First we have the reamer slash all. I'm never in a situation where I need to make a hole in wood or to make a hole in leather or to pierce something and put a thread, uh, yeah, thread through it. It's just, it's never happened to me. At least, especially not in the time that I've owned this knife. We'll get into that kind of stuff in a little while. I have something to say about that in the conclusion. This they call the package carrier for when you, you know, grab a string on that. I can see a situation where this could be useful, you know, where you're trying to pull a wire away from something and you can hook the wire. And that in that case, the center posting is really... A, a nice place for it because you can get that nice grip. I haven't used it, but could. There's other, I, I've seen other things like, I think shoe carrying or something like that. You carry shoes. I don't know. I don't do a lot of that either. <laughs> Usually my shoes are on my feet. But I guess if you had wet shoes, maybe muddy wet shoes, maybe you can pick them up by the laces like that. Maybe that's a, a good um, argument for that one. This tool is one of those weird ones where you're like, I don't know exactly what they thought this was. But essentially, the only thing I can tell is it's a flathead screwdriver. I guess you could say it's a pry bar, but you don't really want to be prying stuff from center post. See, it's, it's that's what I mean. Screw driving, yeah, a little bit. Um, I've used it to poke things with, <laughs> you know, sometimes you're like, I just need something I can poke at that with kind of light pry. Um, yeah, you could use that. Not a big fan of that one. Uh, I think there's just one more. Yeah. This one, I guess is essentially a chisel. You can call it a pry bar too. Um, I could sharpen it if I was worried about it being a chisel. I don't chisel much at least not chisel with something that size and to be honest I'm not sure about chiseling like this so you can, first of all you can't put your fingers there and get that good grip to chisel because now you've got no reach I mean what are you gonna so you need the full length of that so you'd be chiseling like this and that's just not not safe especially if this was actually sharp so I think another loser on the bottom um, uh, so let's, let's review that corkscrew is kind of a mediocre tool, but because of the things added to it, it goes up the chisel, I think is a loser tool. The flathead I think is a loser and this is a loser, but maybe, you know, this has a loser with potential. And even though I never use this one, this one I think if you're going to have a knife like a Swiss Army knife, you have to have something like this. This is a tool that belongs on a knife like this. So that's the underside. That's the minority of the tools on here. The majority are all on the top, which is probably because all the springs for them are on the bottom. That's why I look at this as a bonus tool set, because essentially this knife, from what I what I believe after using it and looking at it, it was designed with this side in mind. So all the springs and stuff like that. And then afterwards they went, oh, you know what? We can squeeze a few things down there. So they just kind of squeeze those in. So I think those tools are kind of losers because they're afterthoughts. On the other hand, I really like the tool set on the top, but how much of it do I use? So first we have what I like to refer to as the pen knife. This is the small blade. I like the idea of sharpening this. I haven't done it to this one yet for some reason, maybe because of the move, but I like getting 
this little sucker sharp like a razor because with that length and then the girth of this handle what the only work you're really looking at doing with this is more scalpel type work so getting this sucker as sharp as possible um, it just seems like a reasonable thing to use that for I've used it here and there um, because I have the spider co on me I'll be honest I don't use the blades on this very often but if this was the only knife I was carrying I think their knives their blades are actually quite capable and there's the full-size one this one I do use more often because this one doesn't get used for everything the way the Spyroco does that means this one stays cleaner so if I need to cut food I'll usually cut food with this because like I said it stays cleaner and I'll use the Spyroco for utility purposes and you know uh, dirty purposes cutting things that are have dirt on them literally whereas this uh, I'll usually save that for food so both useful just not heavily used and we have yeah, yeah, yeah. we have the file this I think this is a pretty great file um, believe it or not this underside here the metal so technically you have three files here the underside the teeth are aggressive enough that I was able to cut through a padlock that I lost the key to with this with this exact knife so that's pretty neat I think uh, the file is one of the things that Victorinox does really well and it's not flimsy I mean when you're dealing with length it's gonna do what it's doing there but that's not the file itself bending it's not as thick as it could be but I mean let's be realistic look at the package we're dealing with here did you expect a super thick file <laughs> so when you need a little file and, and you're in a situation where you need it right then it's there it's kind of like this saw this saw is kind of awesome I've used it for a few things uh, what was the last thing I used it for oh I know so I have do I have it on me yeah so I like to carry this little pocket memo thing lately and I have this Midori pencil holder because the thing about carrying pencils it's great to have a pencil because you never run out of ink and if you have a knife you can always sharpen this but walking around with a pencil tip in your pocket not so awesome this makes that possible and I like to put nice pencils in here I don't because you, this size is not standard that goes in here these Palomino black wings which are really nice pencils they fit in here really well they fit perfectly in fact so I like to put those in here but as you can see they need to be about that so they need to be cut in half and the eraser needs to be cut off that's what I use this for most recently and it works well so like the saw in fact I never would have thought I like having a saw on me until I had this knife and now I really like having a saw and a file on me don't use them all the time but the fact that I have them I like them this is <laughs> this is a tough one because when we talk about Swiss Army knives I think a lot of times we fail to understand that for the most part Swiss Army knife is designed I know this word is probably going to be criticized but it's designed for survival it's designed for camping it's designed for some urban things like you know you have sunglasses or glasses you need to adjust but then this is also really intended on outdoors let's call it that let's not call it survival but outdoors and some people have laughed at this tool and I laugh at it because I don't use it pretty much for what it's meant to be used but when you take it into the context of this being an outdoor utility gear tool whatever word you want to use there then this makes sense this is a fish scaler so if you're camping and you catch a fish and you want to scale it you don't need a separate tool you've got it in this so that's kind of awesome this I can't remember what this is for that it says is for it can work as a nail puller 
for small nails and yeah I've, I've actually used this measurement a few times as ruler on here a few times not many it's just one of those things like yeah we have a long straight surface why don't we just throw that on there you know it's not a feature it's just something that's kind of added but this weird tool remember I said sometimes you just need things to poke things that's what this end up getting used for you know you're trying to get a key out of your keyboard sometimes you can't find that little tweezer thing maybe I use this if something gets stuck down in a hole and you need to probe into it this so this weird thing that most people think doesn't make sense but it is a fish scaler it actually does come in handy not necessarily this part but just the length and sometimes that little that little tip at the top you could also use this to I think if you were to put some wire in there you could probably use it to bend wire maybe that's what it's for I don't remember my favorite tool in every Victorinox was a scissors I love their scissors I love these scissors because they will cut paper they will cut paracord you know sometimes you get um, like Leatherman's or you get something like that and they'll cut one but they won't cut the other like oh it cuts thick stuff but it doesn't cut thin stuff these do both and you don't have to push the blades together to make it I mean I can feel the blades running across each other right now that's how tight that is the one problem some people have is you know these springs fall off they break that can be a problem I haven't had any trouble with this one I love the scissor it's a great size I don't I don't do a lot of the nail stuff with this one usually I'll take out that uh, you know the classic the Swiss Army classic the smaller one and, and do that if I need to but I love the scissors my favorite this one's criticized a lot the pliers once again let's go back to the file is it the best file in the world no is it the thickest file in the world no why because it's in this packet it's in this package size it fits in your pocket it fits in the fifth pocket of your pants of your jeans so if you look at the pliers through that same lens then it's nice to have these will they work in every situation of course not are they as good as Leatherman's pliers of course not because they're tiny but every once in a while you just need you know what I've used these for more than not I'm tightening something on one side and I need to hold the nut on the other side and they work and I don't have to go find another tool I have it in my pocket you know what else it's great for just picking crap up sometimes you need to hold something hot or you need to pick up something that's a little bit you know the tweezers not wieldy enough for you got this is it a tool that you're gonna go tighten nuts with no it's not you know what that you know what you get for that a ratchet set you get a ratchet set or you get a real wrench you get one of those knipex you get something like that this is just hey you have something in your pocket isn't it neat that you have a little small set of pliers yeah that's neat so that's how I look at these and I use them a fair amount to be honest a fair amount because they're there magnifying glass um, I guess in a survival scenario you I haven't, I haven't tested it but you might be able to use this to start a fire 90% um, of what I've done with this is just looked at the wrinkles on my fingers up close <laughs> But as I get older and my eyes, uh, you know, I'm in my mid 40s now, so the rods in my eyes are stiffening, which happens as you get older. So reading small text on things is getting more and more difficult. So sometimes it's pretty sweet to have a magnifying glass. So it's useful. I think it's a pretty good magnifying glass, too. other side of it Phillips head yeah great I love this Phillips head it's a great Phillips head and uh, I use this actually a lot 
because I don't like to go all the way upstairs sometimes to get um, my bag of screwdrivers. Sometimes I'll just bust this out if I happen to have it on me. And then the last two. Let's do them both at the same time. You've got your can opener with your flathead. See, that's the one thing about that piece underneath. That one's supposed to be a flathead. It's the same size as this, so it's a redundancy. You got your can opener with your sharp blade there, which can work if you want as a package opener. Then over here, you've got your larger flathead, bottle opener, and then your wire stripper slash wire crimper. Well, not crimper, but bender. Obviously, I'm not an electrician. <laughs> These are great. Uh, you do you use them all the time? No, but you know what ends up happening with both of these? These also tend to get used as pry bars as well. Sometimes you need the smaller tip and you need to try to get in there. Like I had these, uh, you know, when you put together a piece of furniture, they give you that crappy cardboard that you have to hammer down on the back with the tiny little nails. Well, I needed to pull one of those nails up, and the only thing that got under it was this. So came in handy and then I used that fish tool to pull the rest of the way out actually and same thing here pry bar I don't open a lot of bottles okay so that's the tool set most people probably tuned out at this point because they already know the tool set so for those of you who stuck around let's talk about what I think about this in an everyday carry situation if you had asked me couple weeks ago I would have said great I have no complaints and you know what? I don't have any complaints it's served me well but when I was going through the pouch thing somebody in the comments it actually might have been outside the target demographic as well said I'm talking about the pouch dilemma video to clarify I might need to get rid of this to get the size that I wanted and I did find a pouch that works with this but it's kind of been in my head more and more thinking about this knife. And as we've gone through the tools, you may have noticed that over half of them I don't use or I don't use very often. So that got me thinking a lot about what I think of this. I think it's a great tool. I love the Knox. I love this knife. But in an everyday carry situation, is it really necessary? And it's not nothing is really necessary in everyday carry situation but is it necessary for me is what I'm asking well I think I ended up originally buying this specific model because the things that I wanted which are still the tools that I mostly use I don't think that they came in another smaller form factor I had to lose one or two to get something else, to switch to something else. So I think that's why I ended up getting this. And for that reason, I'm not regretful of that at all. But I have been starting to wonder if maybe this belongs in one of my bigger bags. We've talked about the modular system. So when I grab my bag, and maybe not the one that has most of the tools but the the one in the middle maybe that's where this actually belongs in a situation where the things that I have on me aren't enough my everyday carry aren't enough and I need to level up just a little bit this could be handy so I'm gonna test that out and I'm gonna test that theory out by taking this out of my everyday carry pouch and putting it in that bag and in the place I have something else and I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm going to test it out. I'm going to, I haven't even got it yet. I'm still waiting for it in the mail. I'm going to wear it and use it. Something that I'll be able to carry on my body instead of in the pouch. I'm going to try it out and I'm going to see how it works. And then when I do the video on that, we'll have a better understanding of what I think about this as an everyday carry. Because I can't really say what I think about it until I know what it's like not to have it after having had this on me for the last year would I recommend this hell yes um, do I think that you need this in your pocket everywhere you go no not really 
do I think this is something that you should have like in your backpack or your fanny pack? Yeah. I think you would be really happy that you had this in a lot of situations. So uh, put on top of that the warranty on these things and the fact that these things are built like freaking tanks. I mean, this light, this knife is going to be with me probably for the rest of my life. So you asked for it. One of you asked for it. <laughs> That's what I think about the Swiss champ. Let's hear what you think. And I'm sure you can't wait to tell me all the ways that I'm wrong. And I can't wait to hear it.